slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. It's day two of the Poker Vlogger Meetup, and with every dealer change, we play a double board PLO bomb pot. Only two things scare me, and one is nuclear war. What's the other? Excuse me? What's the other thing that scares you? Bomb pots. What? PLO bomb pots. Combo draws, you know. Range is uncapped. Big hands. If these seven words are gibberish to you, ask a poker nerd. While I've seen DBPLOBPs on vlogs, this is my maiden voyage, so I am far from an expert. But among the guidelines I've gathered, these two are critical. Anyone can be holding anything, so a premium means nothing. Oh, pocket aces! Good for you, doesn't matter. If you don't have the stone nuts on one board, you'd better be nuts adjacent on one, with a draw to the nuts on the other. And if not... Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of there, Kurt Russell! I've seen far too many players punt their stack with the fourth nuts because they lose sight of the game they're playing. While I didn't get footage for this first hand, as they say about double board PLO bomb pots and literally nothing else, you never forget your first time. So here's my recreated Cosmo confession. I'm on the button with two luxury SUVs, and after these flops, I'm feeling pretty good. But then I slap myself in the fucking face. Up top, I've got nothing. Down low, middle set seems pretty good, but everyone has four cards, and six cards are in the middle, which means way too many cards are already on the table. And again, range isn't a thing here, so anyone could easily have four deuce or seven four. Yeah, and hold them in a raised pot with one flop, I'm in heaven. But in this game, no. But it does check around. On these turns, now I'm ahead of those straights. But when low jack bets 15 and high jack raises to 50, I get the pot limit sweats, which is still preferable to no limit sweats. Granted, I'm well aware a picture of me may end up on the Wikipedia page for Ubernit, but let me repeat, I don't know this game. I don't know the percentages. I don't know the likelihood that someone has pocket sixes or pocket threes. Don't be red. Ridiculous. <laughs> no, Balky, it's possible I'm not being ridiculous, because I don't know how you play poker in Mipos, but just watch the next two bomb pots, where one guy stacks off with middle set under top set, and then another guy stacks off with a boat under second quads under top quads, and then ask yourself who's being ridiculous. This game is just a different beast, so since I've got nothing on one board, and could be dead on the other, I'm gonna make a move that many would describe as tight, but I would describe with one word, and one word only, and that word is badass. Watch this, you short-sighted donkeys. Okay, that queen does turn my pot limit sweats into no limit blood tears, but I won't be results oriented and still stand by the fold. That is, until I see what the others have and realize my fold was not badass, but in fact, based on extremely bad assumptions. Because I had forgotten one key detail. Just before the hand, low jack and high jack were asking about the rules of this game. That's right, here I'm carefully playing chess while these two think the pieces are chocolate and are just scarfing down pawns. I'm conscientiously folding the third nuts while low jack is calling a three bet with just some boat and Hijack is raising two streets with a bad flush on a paired board. In fact, at Showdown, Lojack seriously said out loud that he thought he won both boards because on the top board he had, wait for it, two pair. I had three. And as these two jabronis chop up my would-be chips, there's an infinite loop in my head with just five simple words. I've made a huge mistake. I've got tens, raised to 15, using my tried and true method, and get called by the cutoff, button, and small blind, and then the actions on a young player named Greg in the big blind. Actions on you, Greg. Greg, hey. Greg. Greg. Hey. Greg. <laughs> Finally, Greg decides against a squeeze and flats, and the flop is worth the wait. Even better, slow Greg bets into me for 40. On the one hand, great. On the other hand, well, if he's got a big hand on a dry rainbow flop, why is he leading? My top theory is that Greg wanted to squeeze with pocket jacks, and since the flop's all undercards, he wants the pot now before an overcard hits. Regardless, I've got three players behind me, so I won't be slow playing. After the others fold and apparently celebrate a three man bullet dodge. <laughs> Greg picks up the pace and quickly calls. This turn is a whole lot of nothing. And after Greg checks, I stick with my top theory that he's got pocket jacks, which means he'll probably still call a fairly substantial bet. So I slide out a chunky 275. And after Greg heads back to tank mode, he finally says, Your jacks are good, my friend. Well, there goes that theory. I guess I'll never know what he had. Wait, nines? If he put me on jacks, why is he betting flop or calling my raise? Of course, now that I know his hand, and that he was in really bad shape on the flop. Well, it just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. And on a turn, even worse. I'm starting to regret betting so large. Sure, he's probably not even calling half that amount. So maybe I was done getting value no matter what, but it still kind of feels like... I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> How many vloggers were at the meetup game? It was a pretty packed house, and we almost had enough for the softball game, but our shortstop no-showed. Apparently he's playing football now, and good for him. Any team could use an elite punter. 
I've got pocket wolf gangs. Peace. The straddle's on, and everyone folds to me in the cutoff. This table's been limpy, but I should still raise here, and for some reason, I don't. The blind's complete, and fellow vlogger Think Blue checks. And the flop upgrades pocket wolf gangs by 50%. What is it? You have six fingers on your right hand. Boots, boots, boots. Small blind leads for 15, and Think Blue calls. And my plan was to raise, given the rarity of a flop flush, but you never know, so I don't. I've already butchered this hand, but as long as this turns a blank, that's where I'll make my move. I'll take an off two days. As I prepare to pounce, Small blind overbets 75, and Think Blue shoves for 350. No, I just don't get this. What hand could possibly warrant a re-raise shove on this turn? A slow played baby flush? Isn't that hand raising flop? Is it middle set or top set who also didn't take the flop lead? And if Think Blue is strong, what could Small blind have? Is he gonna shove? I am officially flummoxed. As someone who is going to raise pre, and going to raise flop, and going to bet turn, now I'm backing into the shrubs. Given the betting here, is there any world where I'm ahead of both players? After agonizing over all the above, and while it feels like there's a pretty decent chance I'll kick myself yet again, I decide that I have to be in second place here at best, so I hold my nose and do what I feel has to be right. But then small blind snap folds, and Think Blue has a lovely surprise for me. I turned top two, I'm not going to let anybody get their push. And I'm wrong again. Hey everybody at the casino, just take my money now. And for the third time, all I can think is... I've made a huge mistake. Actually, you know what? I stand by the fold, and the folks at Red Chip Poker say that yes, I should have raised preflop, but that my flop flat was fine. And on the turn, it could be a call in theory, but the hero fold makes sense. As for my complogdre, think blue. While you thought your shove was for value and protection, turns out it was a bluff against a player who just can't stop folding the winner. I'm mad at myself, not you. You outplayed me. And for that, think blue, you have my everlasting respect. After bomb pot and bomb pot with a whole lot of flopped squat, here's to better luck in the big blind with the greatest trio that never was. And the top flop is respectable. After small blind checks, I bet 65. Then low jack raises to 150 and cut off the same jabroni from the first bomb pot who kept raising on a paired board with the bad flush. Flat calls. And hey, cut off, I kind of remember that you don't know how these work. I re-raise as much as possible and everyone shoves. And that feels redemptive. Slow poker slogged through 500 minutes of shit smelling folds. I can't even imagine. Or maybe I just don't want to. 500 minutes. That's the length of two Brad Owen vlogs. Just shy of nine hours. Did you take out the recycling? And that'll do it for episode 13 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. It helps the channel a ton. But try to go easy on me for those folds. Boo! Boo! Rubbish! Filth! Slime! Muck! Boo! 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 Okay, that's fair. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. What are you waiting for?